Hey everyone, welcome to The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time 3D. I honestly did not expect to be doing this game right away, but I wanted to use my 3DS and lo and behold, just picked the game that I wanted to do. <laughs> so yeah. So I got a 3DS capture card months ago and I was sitting there, I'm like, what game do I want to do first? And I decided to be stereotypical with it and uh, went for the obvious choice. Anyways, let's begin. Yeah, I have no save datas on this cart because I deleted them all before I started, just in case. But as you can tell, it's already set the link, so I am just going to click yes and be ready to go. Okay, so now that the save is actually started, as you can see on this little screen, I am going to be doing a little bit of a split right now. Currently, the 3DS top screen is unimportant, so what I will be doing with that is... It's going to shrink like so and be out of the way. And the top screen, or sorry, the bottom screen is going to be the bigger one. But when the bottom screen is unimportant, as in such now, since all this has is link or whatever, it's going to shrink or just be completely hidden like so. And then it's going to go back to this. Depending on the screen layout, this is the best I could think of for 3DS games anyway. And I'm just going to stick with that. So let's begin. In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule, long have I served as the guardian spirit. I am known as the Deku Tree. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words, the words of the Deku Tree. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon the realm. Malevolent forces even now are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long, the Kokiri Force, the source of life, has stood as a barrier deterring outsiders and maintaining the order of the world. But, before this tremendous evil, even my power is as of nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. Do you whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth? Navi, go now! Find our young friend and guide him to me! I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly! The fate of the force, nay, the world depends upon thee. So yes, now you get this little neat introduction showing the vast 3D world, which honestly is decently impressive. But back then, this was amazing, because you just see, like, a free-floating camera just going back and forth, and you're just like, whoa. Good job. Try again. There you go. Hello, Link. Wake up! The Great Deku Tree wants to talk to you. Link, get up! Hey, hey come on! Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? <sighs> you finally woke up. I'm Navi the Fairy. I like that your parents are clipping into the board. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Great Ducky Tree asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The Great Ducky Tree has summoned you. So let's get going right now. But yeah, as you can tell, we kind of have a little bit of an overview here. What we could do is if we hit the view button, we could see a kind of sort of pseudo 3D environment going on here. It's not really like too big of a deal. If you just hit the button here, you see on the bottom screen, all my layout is right there. I'm not going to stick in this house long because we got to get going. And welcome to the Kokiri Force, where our adventures begin. And as you can tell, we have some of Link's friends, or one of Link's friends coming to visit anyway. Yahoo! Hi, Link! And we can either be cool and use this ladder, or we can just do this. <laughs> and we're down and about. Wow, a fairy! Finally, a fairy came to you, Link. Wow, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. Now you're a true Kokiri, Link. Is that right? The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. It's quite an honor to talk to the Great Deku Tree. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the Great Deku Tree. Yep, I'm going to do that. There to that. I'm going to do that. But first, let's look at Link's house. We have a little bit of a drawing here, which I can't really click on. Let's see. I can do this, though, and see exactly what we got. It looks like Link is fighting a giant T-Rex of sorts. Oh, as you can tell, I kind of have the gyro control set up. This is kind of a neat way to get a good look around. Back then, I was using just the analog stick, so you would do something like this to move around. But since I have the gyro controls, I can kind of make people sick by... Going like this if I wanted to, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to be really doing that. Really, Navi? I just started. I get what I need to do, but fine. I'll click the button. Great Deku Tree has summoned you. Please come with me. Yeah. So let's go. Great Deku Tree is right over here, as you can have tell by that big sprawling mess. Just ahead, the Great Deku Tree's meadow. We can head right in. As you can tell, it kind of jumps when we head over things, but we have a little bit of a problem here. Hey, you, Mr. No Fairy. What's your business with the Great Deku Tree? About a fairy? You're not even a real man. What? You got a fairy? Say what? The Great Deku Tree actually summoned you? What? Why would he summon you, not the Great Mido? This isn't funny. I don't believe it. You aren't even fully equipped yet. How do you think you're going to help the Great Deku Tree without both a sword and a shield ready? What? You're right. I don't have my equipment ready, but... If you want to pass through here, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Sheesh. Yep. So that is our first opportunity, is to equip a sword and a shield. But we might as well learn how to play while we're at it. As you can tell, we need to find where Sword and Shield is, so naturally the first location to look at would be here. The Kokiri Shop. You go inside, and we get a little bit of tutorial here. Hi Link, look this way. Look over here with L and talk to me with A. So if we click L, it will do a thing called as L targeting. Before, back then, it was called Z targeting. If we talk, yes, yes, that's how you use a fairy. So great that you finally have a fairy partner, because apparently using a fairy partner allows you to look up properly. I'll teach you how to talk to you. Yes, I know how- you just did. <laughs> when a fairy flies near a person or anything, press L to look in that direction. If you use L targeting, you can talk to people from a distance, like we're doing now. Then you have nothing that you can target, you just press L to look forward. Try it. So if we don't have anything to target, we can just look forward and then do the look around, like I said before. So let's head inside the shop, but as you can tell, we kind of don't have any money. <laughs> so we have some Deku Seeds, some Arrows, a Recovery Heart. Basically, all these will come into play later, but right now they're kind of pointless. Because we don't really have any money. But the shield is 40 rupees, so we need to get some rupees. Hello. The shop, it sells things you can get in the forest for free. <laughs> you know how to use the Deku Shield? When you get the shield, tap the green, which will be gear in this case, into the gear subscreen. The gear subscreen, tap the shield to equip it. You also select it without it and equip it using A. Tap it, yep. Basically, I would just go and click the gear button, and I'll pop up this menu here. Okay? And then you'll see everything I can get. This has a very spoiler-filled menu, but, um... What can you do? Anyways, we need some money, so let's get started. Here we go. We picked up five rupees that the salesman just dropped behind the counter for some reason. But oh, we need some more. So, let's read this sign. Um, read the sign, please. Thank you. Stepping stones in the pond. If you boldly go in the direction you want to jump, you'll leap automatically. If you hop around on the stones, you'll become happier. What does happier mean? Let's find out. What? Did I screw that up? <laughs> we'll come back to that. But first I see some 
a blue rupee right there. I got one just by doing that, so let's grab this over here. And then jump down. Looks like we got some rocks. I'm pretty sure I can't pick these up. Oh, yes I can. I just throw it, and money pops out of them. Cool. So what do we got over here? We have the House of the Great Mido, boss of the Kokiri. Yep. That one guy that yelled at us for not having a sword and shield. It looks like he has a lot of stuff in here. So if we look around, we kind of got a good view of this. So we open up this one, we get five rupees. Open up this one. A recovery heart, which is not really great or needed at this point, but I might as well open them all and see what we get. Five more rupees, and then... One rupee. So he basically took his life savings, so let's get out of here. And what's this guy doing over here trying to lift this rock? A by the stone, pick it up. A by the stone, pick it up. Mito Mito, he's making me pick up the rocks in front of his house. Yep, so you can just do that, and bam. Like I showed off earlier. As you can tell, when I was going through here, I was... Yep, see, I could just find money just by walking through the grass. But let's try this now, since I'm not just stepping on the stone. Let's just jump and jump. There we go, now it gave me money. Before, that was weird. So we basically just find money by doing a little bit of a jumping minigame. But if we continue this way, hello there. Oh, fairy finally came to you. Now you have a lot to learn. Best place to go learn some new skills is the Forest Training Center. It's on the hill just above here. All right. So if we want to head into the Forest Training Center, we can go to here. Forest Training Center, don't recklessly cut signs. Read them carefully. We'll do that in a second. Let's check this house out right here. House of the Know-It-All Brothers. All right. I bet some people that are watching me right now are scoffing at the fact that I'm looking at a tutorial. But you might as well. I can tell you about the icons on the screen. Yes, let's do that. Since this is the 3DS port, some people might not know exactly what they are. The one X and Y and two buttons on the lower... I just said and twice. On the lower screen are your item slots. So if you look over here, like you're saying, we got the one, X, Y, and two. So we basically have four item slots instead of three like the original NES. Original N64 game had. Gone a little bit too far back there. Use an item you found. Tap the blue on the lower screen to open the item subscreen. Tap the item and then tap a slot to assign it. It's as easy as that. To use the item, tap any one of those buttons. Assign items you use often to X or Y so you can use them at the press of a button. You'll find it pretty handy. So yes, what he's saying is basically the one and two buttons here. Use them for stuff that you won't use as often. And then the X and Y for stuff that you use all the time. But we're not done here yet. If we look at the upper screen icons, all we see is the A one, which is the action icon. Shows what action you'll perform when you're near something and you press A. Check off and see what you can do. So we got the talk and talk. You want to know how to use the I button? Sure, even though I kind of already showed that. If you tap the I, you can change your view. In places like this, it'll switch to a top-down view. Elsewhere, like in the field, it'll switch to a first-person perspective. Also, when the Navi icon is displayed in places of the I icon, that means Navi the fairy wants to talk to you. Use Navi to listen to her. All right, so if we want to change the view, like you said, we just tap it and we get a better view. It shows us that this guy's right here. If I learn about the map and items, just ask me, but don't ask unless you want to hear a long explanation. Uh, sure. <laughs> Talk about the map, please. There's a map shown on the bottom left of the upper screen. Yep, you see... Wait, what? Bottom... Oh, yeah, yeah, duh. <laughs> when you're out in the field, it shows the map on the upper screen. The yellow arrow shows your current position that you're facing. Red mark shows where you entered an area from. It's nice to know that they kind of sat there and gave us a little bit of a help back then. Nowadays, it's... Pretty much an Aries Auto game, so it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Hold down to turn off the map display and turn it back on. Just press it in any direction. In the middle of the lower screen is the overall map of your current area. Tap the red on the lower screen to see a map with area names. Yep. That wasn't that big of a description. So I can get some item advantages here. There are three kinds of items. Gear items, usable items, and quest items. Gear items are like your sword, a shield, and clothes, and you must be equipped to use. Obviously, we don't have them yet, but... Spoilers, we're getting them. <laughs> Usable items can be set to those. Thank you for that. Quest items are things you collect during your adventure. You don't need to use them, you just carry them around. And if you want to change gear, you tap the green on lower to switch it out. And we basically just tap it. We don't really have anything there yet. And the items is basically telling us the exact same thing as the other guy. But as you can tell, when we change the 3D view here, we can see these pots kind of stand out. We can pick them up and throw them. And get some money out of it. Thank you for that. And we're all set. So now that we're getting a little bit of money, we now can enter the forest training center here. So let's head inside. What do we got here? Thrust attack signs. The thrust of your sword, press that towards your target while L targeting. It's the analog stick, or analog nub in this case. Then press B. 
What do we got here? Cut grass with your sword. If you just swing with B, you'll cut horizontally. If you hold L, you'll cut vertically. Good to know. I still don't have a sword yet, though. And what do we got here? Selecting target. If you see the green arrow pointing down at the target, you can target with L. In other words, if you press and hold L when you see it above an object, you can lock onto it. If you release L, the lock will be released. There are other objects with the green arrow below them, above them. <laughs> Rapidly press L to switch between targets. So you can target the stones next to this line for practice. So yes, there are two modes that we could do, which is hold the button down in order to target, or we can enter the gear here. Or not the gear, where is it? Is it under map? No. There you, there you are, it's under options. Uh, we can actually switch to do a switch mode. So if you make it, you just tap the L button and it just holds it down, no problem. And then the camera control, you could use it to look up and down or can invert it. And then motion controls, I'm keeping them on because it is kind of helpful. So I can just like look around by doing that. So if I want to tap and switch targets really quickly, I just kind of like tap the button when it, and then I'll do that. So I can tap multiple targets pretty simply that way. Hello there. Hey, let's work on some moves. The jump sideways while targeting, press A as you move left or right. Do a backflip while targeting, press A as you move backwards. Do a roll attack while targeting, press A and you can move forward. While you roll, you can avoid damage, just like Dark Souls. Sorry, wrong series. <laughs> we have the sword ready while L targeting, you can just jump attack by pressing A. A jump attack does double damage. You can use L targeting on stone next to me. Let's practice. All right, so boop, boop, boop. You get basically all the little features, but we don't have a sword yet. But what do we got here? Hole of L. Let's go through this small hole. Stand in front of the hole and press that towards it, which is the nub. When the action icon shows enter, press A to crawl into the hole. Pay attention to what the action icon says. All right, so let's head inside. So this hole of L, which is the left analog stick in this case, will just basically let us go forward. And now we're in here. Okie dokie. And we got some rupees right here. And we got another sign to read. You point with L target. If you have no object to look at, you can just look forward with L. Yep. It's quite convenient. If you could hold it down, you basically do this. You can just move around, look around, do all that fancy stuff. So we hear a noise here. Let's wait. Yep, there's a giant boulder. So if we're careful, we can avoid it entirely and get a good look around, see if there's any extra money we can get. If we wait one more time. We could avoid the boulder that's just kind of going around. Nothing over there, but if we check over here, we have this. Visit the house of the Nodal Brothers to get answers to all your item related questions. Thank you, I already did that. Yep, we got the Kokiri sword. If we tap the green button, we can equip it. This is a hidden treasure of the Kokiri, but you can borrow it for a while. Be sure to practice with it before you actually fight. All right, we shall do that. So gear, sword, boop. And now it is equipped. And let's go back through here. Thank you, game. There we go. It's actually kind of funny because this is a pretty early title for the 3DS. So I like traded in so long ago <laughs> that I actually had to like buy one. I just bought it online because I'm like, eh, just order it, wait for it to come in. <laughs> and I got it that way. I traded in because Majora's Mask came out and I'm like, well, I'll just buy it on the eShop at some point. Which I forgot was even a thing when I ordered it, but whatever. <laughs> Whoops. It's always nice to have a physical copy, though. Welcome. Let's grab the shield. Now that we have it, we can equip it. Yep. If we press, it's basically telling us how to use it. I'll just show you how to use it when I get outside. So let me equip that. There we go. So if we want to guard with it, we just press the R button. And then we could use the analog stick to look around, which that looks a little bit weird. So let me get, yeah, there we go. That's a little better. But if we hold the L button, we could basically just guard and move at the same time. And then we could kind of look around with the 3DS. It's pretty useful, but in hindsight, we can't really use that too well. Actually, we can head over here. What is this place? I never really like enter here ever. Also the twins, okay. Is this anything special? Or is it just more money? <laughs> I never like enter here because it's like so pointless. 
There we go. Hello. My sister took some rupees and went shopping at that store with the red roof. Speaking of rupees, the green one's worth one, blue one's worth five, and red one's worth 20. Good to know. I'm switching to view. You have no more pots in here. Okay. All money is good money. And we have one more house to explore, which is this one right over here. Saria's house. Soraya, Saria, Saria. However you want to say it. She always has hearts in here, so if you need some hearts, you can get them. This will be pretty useless later. <laughs> but it's nice to know that they have hearts there. But yes, now that we have the sword and shield, let's head inside. You want to see the great Deku tree? Must yep, I already did. Eh, what's that? Oh, you have a Deku shield. And what's that? Is that the Kokiri sword? Good grief. Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still a wimp, huh? I, the great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Shoot, how did you get to be the favorite of Saria and the great Deku tree, huh? <laughs> Yep, that is your problem, buddy. That's because we're nice and we're not, like, rude and mean and stuff. Oh, looks like we have some problems here. The Dekubaba. Although it looks withered, it'll hurt you if you touch it. So let's not touch it and just do that. And we get a Deku stick from it. If we tap the gear, we can equip it. Which we won't be using these too often. But there are items that are useful as Link when he's younger. So I'm going to equip that to X for now. And let's get another one, please. And one more. There we go. Great Deku Tree, I'm back. Oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Link, welcome. Listen carefully to what I, the Great Deku Tree, am about to tell thee. Thy slumber these past moons must have been restless and full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Link, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need thee to break the curse with thy wisdom and courage. Dost thou have the courage enough to undertake this task? Yes, I do. Then enter, brave Link, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Link. Link, when Navi speaks, uses her button to listen well to the words of wisdom. All right. So, we could finally head inside the Great Deku Tree. Which, equipped with a sword and shield, we know what has to come. It is going to be the first dungeon, but if we get a good view here... Ha! He is much bigger than I remember him being. But that is nice. So, on the next episode of Ocarina of Time for the 3DS, I know I kind of went into tutorial mode on this episode, and I deeply apologize for that, but it is an LP after all, and... I did want to show off that I am playing the 3DS game, and there's going to be some differences from the N64 game that I am totally familiar with. So with that, I'll see you all then.